<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car is a bit rickety in comparison. To, yeah, it's on steroids and crack. <laughs> Oh, I just found an electric uh, fire police car hybrid (laughs) next to nothing because the battery is dead Uh and it is in Oslo. So it's, I mean, that's a beautiful project. All right, I'm going to send a message. That sounds... Is this still available? And then I'm going to ghost it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's the kind of things that you keep an eye out for something that they say is dead, but you know why it's dead. It's and it's something easy to fix. Yeah, I mean it says the battery is dead and tried charging it, but probably need a new one. And it's uh, for like sixty quid or something like that. But it looks in a really decent yeah. shape. And why am I sitting here describing it to you when I can send you a link? Ta da! There it is. It. I mean, I, it's 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 not like I don't need another project exactly (laughs) (laughs) that looks really good yeah it's too good to be true almost and it's a two-seater so i can have both kids in it which is nice and then uh, since it's used and cheap i have no problems modifying it with uh, air compressor horns and uh, whatever flamethrower i mean i'm sure your kids would love that even if it's just stationary just hook it up to the uh, yeah, the, the, the one you built. Yeah, I think um, I think you should buy yeah. that because everybody needs an electric bill. You can either send a melding or be <laughs> on fix Ferdig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best is to be on fix Ferdig. Then right. yeah. be on that Salgan and send a med fix Ferdig. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, continue. This is fine. <laughs> There's not much more information. Uh, no, I was go- I was going to point on the screen, but I, I realize <laughs> you're not going to see what I'm pointing to. <laughs> this is the first lesson for Glenn in the Nordic languages. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like the sound of your your language. Actually, it's um, it's not harsh language. It's quite nice to listen to. That's because we haven't yelled at you that much. Yeah, I wouldn't. Or, probably, uh... I probably wouldn't know if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Then you just turn down the volume, <laughs> it so just, it's okay. It's nice. It sounds. It just sounds a little bit bouncy. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> oh, it, and it, yeah. it is. <laughs> so have you bought it. You bought the police car. Well, I'm gonna send a. I'm gonna send a message afterwards and ask if it's uh, available. But then again, it's. Uh, that's a nice thing with Oslo because it's the most populated city in, in Norway, but that also means that statistically, a, a lot of the things that are being sold is being sold in Oslo, and it's it's a hellhole to drive into to get something. <laughs> so it's like, it really needs to be a good buy for me to actually spend time one afternoon driving in right. rush traffic to get into Oslo and then going around there in in the crappy roads and then going back out again. So it's a, it's a several hour ordeal. I mean, it's in distance. I, I, it should be 20 minutes right. in and out, but I mean, you, you end up spending hours. So it's, oh, it's a dreaded city. <laughs> Can't you just take something like that in on public transport? You've only got to get there. You can I drive mean, the thing back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got some extra batteries. Oh, I brought I brought batteries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would that would actually be a fucking brilliant yeah. video. That <laughs> really would. All right, fi- filming myself taking the train in, and then you have to drive all the back roads because it's not road legal. So you need probably a hundred batteries. <laughs> like it's gonna take a weekend. <laughs> And the guy selling it, oh, so it's for your kids. I mean, it's a fun toy. Kids. And nope, it's for me. And uh, but all right, do you have a car? No, I'm going to drive. <laughs> now it. I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just changing the subject from uh, the electric car. Did you actually cut anything with your plasma cutter yet? 
No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need uh, I need some steel plates. Um, I mean, I could cut the, the steel bars, yeah. but that's a bit boring. Um, but yeah, maybe this weekend I'll uh, fire it up and try it. I... I kind of realized that the uh, the hot water tank is a project that's a bit ahead in time, so maybe I should just use that as a cutting exercise. And um, now I do I did get some filler rods with uh, the welder for stainless, but I mean I, I would like to get a bit more decent on traditional black steel first, and I have some other project and. Uh, it's just standing there outside and people are giving away hot water heaters. So yeah, I, I could probably find a way to stash it somewhere, but uh, yeah. I'm trying to not have my yard look like I'm having a continuous yard sale. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you could yeah. make the, um, the hot water tank, but like a, a missile, couldn't you? Just chop off the top, put some plants in it, and then put some fins on the bottom for it to stand. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's almost as good as the uh, the the minion. <laughs> but then again, it it's it's two hundred liters. So I mean, I I still would like to make the minion and then just in the middle of the night go somewhere and then just uh, fill it with concrete and then just uh, watch the news when someone discovers it and then tries to move it because you have to rent the crane to lift it. But then again, if you if you're gonna leave it discreetly somewhere and you're gonna fill two hundred liters of concrete through that small top hole, and you also have to mix yeah. it, and that is like ten bags, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not gonna be discreet or nope. quick. <laughs> There's a thing here called postcrete. Do you have that? I, I was thinking exactly yeah. that. <laughs> so, you, so What's you, that? You, you basically you normally use it on fence posts. So you pour it in dry tip some water on top of it and within five minutes it's set so that the post is sturdy enough for you to it'll start it'll oh, yeah. use that yeah that's should work actually <laughs> i'll do the trick <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm still open for ideas okay. but yeah um Try not to get arrested but i mean i know we talked about you wanting the police to come around but <laughs> I think that I'll get you extra hundred subscribers. It might be worth getting arrested for. <laughs> no. Once again, we're back yeah, at I mean, the no, price I've... of subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a felony charge. That's a that's a small price to pay. <laughs> if it's just something that goes on your record for a couple of years, doesn't require a fine or a sentence, it's got to be worth it, surely. Yeah, and if you get the sentence, then, then mean, you're uh... back to that enjoying the peace and quiet. Yeah. I don't know. You're, you're a handsome, uh, you you're have a handsome a... fellow. You might not get that much <laughs> peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that would it would be cool to like. Oh, you have a YouTube play button. How nice for you! Look what I have: a restraining order. <laughs> like, uh, you're not allowed to within the vicinity of a hot water tank for the next ten years or something like that. <laughs> So you've been to London and you've you've been to other busy cities. How does Oslo compare to those? Is it as busy or? Uh, No. I I mean, if you're going to compare busyness in Oslo, like if you're going there as a tourist and you're walking down the main street, it's a bit like Las Vegas. Everything is happening on that main street. But if you walk like one parallel street to either side, it's it's dead as anything dead, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have the ferries going out to the islands in the fjord. And I mean, there are things to do, but I don't think it's... Uh, Well, there is a lot of other cities that you could travel to that are nicer and cheaper and will give you more bang for uh, your bucks, but also things to see. I mean, it's it's nothing special about Oslo in my eyes. And 
they are building new buildings and so on, but it's very generic and they don't have the visionary uh, thoughts of building something that stands out in a crowd right. that's actually worth uh, coming to experience. I mean, if anyone is traveling to Norway, yes, the major airport is outside of Oslo, but I would take the next local plane to anywhere else than Oslo. If you want to experience something in Norway, then go to the West Coast, see the fjords, see the mountains of the north, the northern light. I mean, Oslo is a very boring city. And I mean, if you're going to see a boring city, you could go see another boring city <laughs> for for much less somewhere else. Yeah, so, yeah it, it doesn't even have that going I, for I it. I think that's the same for more or less all the all the cities in in uh, Scandinavia. That's I mean, you you don't go to either Sweden or Norway or Finland or Denmark to to visit a city. Huh? Yeah, I I say you go to visit the. The landscape, the the mountains, the the islands, anything but a city, really. <laughs> is that just a reflection on you two, or is that a reflection on everybody in Scandinavia? Do you think? I mean, there's, I'm sure there's some people who think that the, the cities are nice, but I think most of us. Uh, I mean, traditionally, you you try to escape the cities when you're on holiday. You go to a cabin in the woods instead. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, if I, I enjoy going uh, on a city holiday with the wife, but of course, then we go somewhere where it's uh, a good atmosphere, a good food, uh, good drinks, and some historical landmarks or, or something to experience and see in not freezing weather. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> The Scandinavia is in none of those. <laughs> so. Well, we have that week in summer that's, that the weather is really nice. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's kind of hard, like, taking that leap of faith and then uh, spending a, a half a billion dollars on the travel fares and arrangement to get there and, oh, it wasn't this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so <it's... laughs> yeah, I like... Um... I like a few cities. Most cities I don't like, but I like my local one. I love Lincoln. I think that's a very pretty, nicely busy enough city for me. And uh, Cambridge, Chloe's um, city is very nice as well. <laughs> I, I, I had a good laugh today when uh, I think it was Tim mm. <laughs> who talked about the the capital of Lincolnshire. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Capital? Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, as a, I mean, to be a capital, isn't there a, a, a size limit? <laughs> but obviously not. Then again, I, I've never been to Lincolnshire, so I, I don't know. I mean, it might be the the biggest of everything ever. So, no, it's, yeah. it's not. It's really not. <laughs> there was some bad terminology on Tim's part, but that's why we love him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now we have some something to comment on <laughs> to keep his chat going. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with you, Glenn. I, there is not many cities I like like to go there, but I th I think Barcelona is one of the cities that I've visited, and I I really want to go back at some point just to hang around in the back streets and. Uh, eating uh, good food on, on that old town square and having uh, blue drinks until I'm on a bus <laughs> before uh, lunch lunchtime on a Saturday and then just uh, go down to the beach and uh, drink sangria. So, uh, yeah. That sounds oddly specific. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you have kids, you fantasize about <laughs> things like that. <laughs> we went to uh, Sorrento, Italy. Um, a few years ago for a wedding and that was just absolutely crazy busy and it was I hated it on the streets but being on the balcony drinking wine and watching the people below I, I really enjoyed that part of it for people watching a busy city I think it's a nice pastime if you like people yeah not talking to them just to look from a distance from a safe distance <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
that could be bearable, but mm, yeah, that again, no. <laughs> <laughs> Drops a piece of blue tech on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what are you going to do? You can't keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> I've got another piece to, to fill with. I just don't want to tread it into the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blue carpet. <laughs> so maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're going to regret that every time you step on it in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't stand up i'm stuck to the floor damn it <laughs> <laughs> that's some strong blue tag you have over there yeah. <laughs> industrial grade <laughs> oh yeah it's good stuff here mate <laughs> <laughs> so you got your birthday coming up soon havard any celebrations planned uh yes i uh of course in norway we have the uh, uh, what I don't, I don't know how you translate it into English. We call them uh, shoehorn days. I mean, if you, have a pub... <laughs> if you have a public holiday on a Thursday, everybody takes Friday off, and nothing happens in Norway. So uh, we had a meeting today with one uh, Italian guy, and he was going to spend two weeks in Norway uh, talking to various companies, and he said like. Yeah, I'm going to be here until Wednesday next week. I thought about being here until the weekend, but there is probably no point in asking for a meeting between Wednesday and Monday. And I said, no. <laughs> I mean, there's a public ho holiday on Wednesday. That means that people are going to the cabin. So Thursday and Friday is going to be dead everywhere. Nobody is working or accepting any meetings. So, um, and <laughs> myself included, I have a birthday and then, two days i'm thinking all right maybe i should treat myself to uh like renting one of these small excavators and spending the two days in the garden just uh, wreaking <laughs> happy happen. birthday to me <laughs> yeah i mean is there anything better on your birthday didn't you drive an excavator I, mean, I, I can't was. think of anything <laughs> yeah and yeah. gonna put a candlelight on the <laughs> the front loader there <laughs> Definitely treat yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you, 42 this year? 43? 42. Yeah. So it's the, um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't expect too much. Nothing major planned. I've bought everything I wished for uh, uh, by myself so uh, to take the pressure off from anyone else getting to something. <laughs> you have to screw up so, their plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just said, uh, I mean, if you want to, you can uh, donate gift cards to the local hardware store <laughs> <laughs> and I can buy tools. That's, uh... You can buy me one, one square centimeter of a uh, shipping container. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a uh, there. There has been a couple of them uh, at a decent price, but it's still not. And I was thinking, all right, if there's a good sale after summer, because then I can leave it on the side of the garage, so then I can work and on um, populating it and moving things over during the winter, and then I can have a a lorry come and pick it up and move it next summer completely filled with all the equipment that should follow it because it's, I'm going to place it on a play, uh, on our plot of land where you don't want to move the CNC down that slope because there is no uh, good pathway for that and it's too expensive to to risk it and then drop it and everything being knocked out of line so alignment so <laughs> Maybe that could be a, a way to finance it, to sell, sell parts of it, uh, as uh, just paint a grid on it. And this part, Glenn owns. So Glenn decides what to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that. Uh... Balls. <laughs> yeah, I could have. A, I could have a sticker wall on the outside. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, you pay per square centimeter, so. Uh... <laughs> 
I'm having a hard time seeing that people <laughs> want to pay for putting their own sticker outside a shipping yeah. container in uh, in uh, boonies in yeah. Norway. <laughs> that's a that's a hard sell. <laughs> true, true. Okay, okay, it's just you. all how you market it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Put a twenty four hour accessible webcam on it, so people can see the sticker at any time. <laughs> But that again, I I, I still have uh, the billionaire fishing video out, but no one has caught on. There hasn't been even a nibble on the, <laughs> <laughs> the hook and sinker. So. That's just the way YouTube yeah. market videos, though, isn't it? They've not done it. They purposely kept it quiet because they knew it would be too, too successful. And then everybody yeah. else would jump yeah. on the same bandwagon. <laughs> That's yeah. probably it. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Yeah. I, and then you... well, I like to sh- I like to share with fellow makers. So if anyone else want to get themselves a billionaire sugar daddy, <laughs> <laughs> so um, feel free. <laughs> How many billionaires are there in the world? I, I think when I googled it, it was like two thousand six hundred and something. See, that, that would so, be dominated, uh... wouldn't it, on YouTube if they all got a billionaire sugar daddy? You'd have two thousand makers, heavily funded, just running the whole show, wouldn't you? That would be the perfect world. <laughs> as long as you're one of the funded ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But, but then it, it starts getting an arms race and you, Monday morning, your billionaire calls you. Did you see what, Glenn's, <laughs> what, uh, what Glenn did? <laughs> His billionaire is shouting all over our old social media. You have to top him. You have to do something better. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that. That would be fun. I mean, today they're just uh, having dick measuring contest with super yachts, cars, airplane, and now it's just yeah. the same fight, but just with their own maker. So <laughs> go make something that's bigger than his, and all right, <laughs> out there building a 30 feet <laughs> minion. <laughs> it would end up just being an arms race, wouldn't it? It would turn to weapons yeah. and end up being an arms race. So you can blow up their billionaire first. <laughs> <laughs> Turn and bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it would be a combination of scrap heap challenge and robot wars. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> Probably, yeah. Real. So the makers, we would just end up being peasants in a, a very elaborate <laughs> game. It's like, fight. <laughs> 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 combination of um, scrap heap challenge and um, robot wars is reminded me of the film that was on the other night actually real steel have you seen that one with Hugh Jackman yeah with the fighting robots that's uh that, that would be cool because <laughs> I like the film it's it's one on the list that I actually never got around to see but yeah I forgot about it until you just mentioned it so good movie well worth a watch it has its moments but yeah it's not. You don't expect. You, you, that's one of those movies that you should go in with too much expectations because then you will probably be let yeah. down. It's I a mean, bit like watching Rocky at the end, though. You're on the edge of the seat, sparing little Atom on. Come on, Atom, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can kill that big guy. <laughs> Maybe you're more invested in that kind of thing than I am. <laughs> Yeah, some some movies are they. You're not a big hit with the critics, but I mean, if you're on the edge of the seat, it is amazing. And I, I've seen a lot of car movies, and the best one so far is a Norwegian animation from the seventies, eighties. It's like a stop motion animation, and. It's really, I mean, all the audio is like uh, household appliances. Uh, <laughs> like when you have a, a whisk in a plastic bucket, it makes a, a sound and they just speed that up. And So all the engine sounds are just the makers fiddling around in their kitchen, making uh, sounds and uh, tweaking them in post. And it is so brilliantly made that there's, of course, this epic car race at the end and you're actually sitting and seeing that movie and you're moving with the car when it jump over and in the turns and everything. I mean, and if you, if a movie gets you to move in yeah. the chair that you're sitting, it's a good yeah. movie. Uh, but I'm going to send you an image. Um, 
We do, we'd there, love there all these images model. on the podcast. It just works so well. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna yes. put. Yeah, I'm gonna put uh, the appropriate ones in the in the mentions in the episode comments. So just look in your podcast player of choice, and there should be a link somewhere. Right, I need to. All right, snip. I don't have them all on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't really do links on Instagram. Yeah, that's my excuse. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here is the main car from oh, that wow. movie. And they actually, as part of uh, like selling the movie when it came out, they actually had a coach builder uh, build this car. So it's uh, it's based on a Cadillac chassis with a V8 engine, and of course it has a rocket engine, and it's all bells and whistles for show. But they made that model car, and there is one guy that's allowed to drive it. It's road legal, uh, and of course with a lot of limitations. And there's a Norwegian car show many years ago where the the host got to drive it as one of the very few people that are allowed. And I, I can understand that they do they don't want to have every Tom, Dick and Harry jumping in the seat and trying it. But of course I I wanted to drive this one since I was three years <laughs> old or whenever the movie came out. And at some point I'm going to build one and not, not full size, but enough. Like I've seen these, I think you have it in the UK as well, where they build like uh, quarter cars or something. It's like scaled okay. down versions of the Jaguar E type or something. It's enough for one adult right. sitting in there and you look a bit oversized, but they're fully functional. Uh, and if you're going to buy one, they are crazy expensive, but they have races with them and everything. And I just recently stumbled over a guy on TikTok and he has made a replica for his kids or something like that. But he's. Uh, all the plates are in brass and he has bent them and uh, used pop rivets and everything. So it, it looks brilliant. And I was thinking, just hitting this guy up and how do you want to make one twice the size? <laughs> and let's put an engine in it. But then I realized it's going to be a collaboration and we have to figure out uh, how we uh, time share it. And I don't want to time share that. That's going to be my price. Possession. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm gonna ditch that idea. I need to. Uh, so of course, for anyone wondering, there is a reason why I'm now starting to uh, tool up on the, <laughs> the metal fabricating side because that's the end goal. <laughs> for anybody who doesn't check out the link, it looks like chitty chitty bang bang that's been done properly. <laughs> that's how it should have looked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car is a bit yeah. rickety in comparison. Yeah, it's on steroids and crack. <laughs> if only that was what the cars looked like in the real world, not just those plastic boxes we have nowadays that all look the but, same. I mean, I'm of of course, it's, it's the range issue. I, I can understand it. I get it. And of course, with with petrol cars or diesel cars yes it's fuel economy because it's expensive but i was kind of hoping that okay we have now electric cars and you have of course the huge expensive one with long range of course you want them to be aerodynamic because that helps but there is also a segment there where they have like smaller town cars that they don't have a long range you don't need it you use them to commute back and forth a few miles every day and then you put it on a charger in your garage and they don't have to look like a soapbox that you have in your shower. I mean, be creative. Start making cars that looks good again. Yeah. But no, they're still... And it's probably because there are some <clears throat> rules and regulations you need to comply to these days. I mean, <laughs> I'm having <laughs> hard to believe how to get that car through yeah. all the, <laughs> the EU safety regulatory I bodies just, <laughs> without... A... I was just imagining that hitting somebody, how their body would react to that car... <laughs> It'd be in several pieces <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, it looks like it's. Just... I mean, with that, uh, I mean, with that bonnet, you wouldn't notice hitting anyone uh, before half an hour or something because it's so long. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you would find the bits and pieces of them in the grill and that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think one of the one of the most 
iconic design features and this you had the on older vehicle it's the leather belt keeping the hood yeah. down mm. and i actually did that i had a motorcycle once uh an old banger and of course i had an old belt uh from uh hennes and mary uh, <laughs> just bog standard leather belt and all right I just mounted that under my tank and then just uh, used the belt to keep the lid on. It actually looked <laughs> decent. And after that, I said that one time I'm going to have a car with a belt. <laughs> and there, there it is. Uh, if you don't get a car with a belt, you can always add suspenders to one, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> be, be, rest, rest assured, I will. <laughs> The suspender mobile. <laughs> Again, two different images coming up. <laughs> one for the Scandinavians <laughs> and one for the British. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's, um, of, sorry, you were talking of films, but going, um, keeping on a similar theme, I was, we were talking about Fallout last week. And uh, Friday night, I got a bit of time to myself. I thought, oh, I'll watch episode nine of Fallout. And sadly realised I'd already watched episode eight, and that was the last one in the series. <laughs> <laughs> so then it wasn't a conclu- uh, a big finale then. <laughs> there probably was a big finale. I thought the whole thing it was good, but it was a little bit slow. To be honest with you, it would have been. I, I would have preferred to see it as a film. I had the same with The Last of Us, because that uh, that was a show they dropped one episode every week. And me, me and the wife, we watched them, and of course we watched the, we watched one episode one night, and of course I waited, uh, and the next week uh, the day came around, and I I bought chips and dip, and I was really <laughs> getting ready, and my wife is like, what, what what are you doing? I mean, it's ten minutes. Come on, be ready. <laughs> no, it was last episode last time, <laughs> and I just went on to Netflix and no, <laughs> but then I, I thought. That wasn't the last episode. They didn't really conclude with anything. It like it felt like a big cliffhanger for the next episode. And at that point, they didn't even plan for a season two yet. So it wasn't a cliffhanger for a known season two or anything. So, it, I mean, that was a really crappy ending to a brilliant series. So I, and I then got the Game of Thrones all over again. <laughs> but I think that's the, that's the standard re- nowadays when you, in your first season, that... You have to spend like the last ten minutes just building up hype for an eventual second season to to build up some talk on the internet and get the the hype going so that you actually get the second season. Uh, so yeah, as of of course, but I mean that series have a great potential. You could actually end the storyline there and start a season two, just picking up there. It's you. You could still have closure yeah, for that season have, but... and start up again the next one, but yeah. And then, of course, being there with uh, the chips and the dip and <laughs> not knowing what to look at, but of course, you need to look at something. And then it's like uh, being at the blockbusters again, uh, trying to figure out which movie to rent. So, of course, we we spent. Uh, two hours uh, trying to figure out uh, what we were going to watch while we ate the chips and dip and uh, of course just went to bed without watching anything because we couldn't decide so <laughs> that's why i have a, a list uh on things that this is probably something that we would enjoy watching both series and movies and then just go through that and see if something catches our fancy you say that, but and we have that as well. And then, of course, uh, an evening comes uh, that, all right, we have time. Should we watch something? Yeah, and we sit down. And should we watch some crime? No, that's too... I, I don't want to think. All right, we need something light. No, that's too funny. I'm not in the mood for that. And, uh, <laughs> and then, of course, we, we have too much on that list. So it's Yeah, you have to curate that list. <laughs> and then it's it's hard work. <laughs> Having the world on our fi- at our fingertips. I mean, the one function I wanted on, like, for instance, Spotify, when you had a party while you were studying, um, there is always one that goes and changed the song. So you only hear the 21st seconds of every song. 
So you should have a playlist where you can add a song, but he will play through all the songs on the list and you can't skip and you can't like jump ahead. And you should also have a random function on on Netflix. Just are you feeling lucky punk? And then you press there and it just <laughs> picks up a random episode from the entire catalog. And then once you press that button, it's going to play that movie or that episode to the bitter end. You, you, you're not allowed to switch. It doesn't help turn it off and back on again. I mean, that's the choice you made and you have to sit through it. And that, that would be a nice, uh, because then you take the thinking out of it. It's just sit down. All right, let's watch something. I mean, that's uh, that's right, actually a rather decent idea just to have them some kind of uh, linear streams. Like Netflix has four channels that are pushing, uh, having programs of different styles just running 24-7. And then you just click on that channel, like turning on a TV. And then it's, it's some kind of series. And if you like it, you can go back <laughs> and see it. And if it's... You can have one that's kid friendly, and one that's horror, one that's porn. I don't know, uh, <laughs> depending on what you feel like. Well, I think it's quite obvious what you're in the mood for. <laughs> Maybe it's time to wrap up. Uh... <laughs> uh... If we were next to KJ, the room would be so much warmer from his red glow right now. <laughs> That's a little slip of the tongue, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to say what's red and glowing. Um... <laughs> okay, let's call it an night. <laughs> it's getting late. It's time to find the bed, obviously. <laughs> if you made it this far, the kitchen, if or... you made it this far, thanks for listening. And I'm See sorry. You next week yeah. with James. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.